I found out that she had AIDS on the day she died. How did you find out exactly? Went into the office um, and the woman said, you know, your wife has HIV. And at this stage, I just collapsed, mate, I was done. I, I, I was, it was like I was in a different body. Not only was my wife about to die, the second thing was me. I've been with my wife eight years. We'd had unprotected sex. My second thoughts were to me, I'm going to be dead. I've got eight. How you doing, folks? Pete here from Tyrish Times. What's the story? Today, we're going to talk to Gary from London, England, who had been married to his Thai wife for eight years when he found out that she had AIDS. And he only found out that she had AIDS the day she passed away. So we're going to start this story with how Gary ended up moving to Thailand, his first relationship with a Thai woman in Pattaya. Then we're going to get into Gary's move to Phuket and how he met his Thai wife in Phuket and then the story there. So let's get into it. And just before we start, folks, I'm all about freedom of speech on this channel. But just bear in mind, a man has lost his wife and he's going to be reading the comments, what you comment down below. So just bear that in mind when you are commenting. Thanks. Yeah, man, it's... It's been, yeah, it was, it's been, it's been hard. Um, it's had its good points. It's had its low points. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Um, I'm a bit nervous to tell the story, really, because it is still, um, this all happened. The, the main part of my story happened quite some time ago. Um, well, six years. My wife's been gone. Um, I um, was married to her for a while. And yeah, just things, it started out good. My life in Thailand, and then towards the end, obviously the, this happened. Um, so, yeah, mate, what do you want to know? Well, let's get into it. Let's just get in, start at the very start, Gary, and um, just get into, like, uh, I love knowing, uh, finding out people's story of how they actually came to Thailand. So you, you, you came to Thailand back in 2001. <laughs> Yeah, I came back uh, 2001. I initially came on holiday. Um, I come with a group of nine lads. Um, what happened was I was going through a divorce in England, um, my first wife. Going through a divorce uh, it was a little bit messy. My boss, who's my mum's partner, has a company, and nine of the lads decided that they was going to Thailand. At this stage, I had no interest in Thailand. I'd never really thought of it. Um, it was not really a place I considered going but obviously something stuck my mum's boyfriend said come along it'll cheer you up when we ended up going for 16 days we went to Pattaya um, first ended up in Pattaya I was it wasn't it wasn't what I expected um, it wasn't really a place I enjoyed at that time so I, I didn't really drink at the time I wasn't into the bar girl scene I was a little bit at this stage I was I'm going to say horrified because I'd only heard the stories on the internet. So for me, Thailand still had these connotations that I was a little bit worried about. Um, went to Pattaya. Yeah, it was a drinking culture. The guys I was with obviously was all drinkers into the girls and whatnot. I came, I flew to, I, I didn't like it. So after about seven days, I decided I wanted to go to Phuket because I like scuba diving. Um, I learned to scuba dive at a young age, about 1981 as a kid. Loved it. Wanted to go scuba diving. Knew Phuket was good. My mum's boyfriend and a couple of other guys came with me. So we stayed here for, oh, here, sorry. We stayed in Phuket for the remainder of the holiday. It took about three days to go. And I went diving. Loved Phuket. Um, it was a little bit of a different place for me. Not as busy and noisy as Pat Pattaya. Went diving. Um, scuba diving. Loved it. Got talking as you do. People saying, oh, yeah, you know, you can become an instructor here. At this stage, I was an advanced, an open water diver only. People said, yeah, you can come out and do it. So I went back to England. Obviously, I had money from a settlement where I was getting divorced. I decided to do a diving course, in, of all places, in Pattaya again. Um, but this time it was more different um, because I was obviously staying away from the busy areas and it was more studying. So I trained to become a scuba diver, went all the way up from, they call it zero to hero, not quite, I had diving history, become an instructor, um, 18 months it took me, um, living and working with fellow expats and guys from all over the world was amazing, um, it was a really good time, it opened my eyes to an awful lot, 
Um, it was something I'd, I'd, I'd only really dreamed of, I suppose. I think watching one of those movies, Out of the Blue, um, with, I can't think of the guy's name now, but that movie, and it was a lifestyle. The training was hard. Um, there was obviously a lot of partying, went for a few bits and pieces. Um, ended up staying with a girl, um, Thai girl. Um, I'm going to say freelance, working back, but not particularly a bar girl, but she was there. Anyway, I was with her for a while. She was a lovely girl. Things went a bit mad. She was on Yaba, taking drugs. She tried to commit suicide in my room. This is one of the first real eye-openers for me. She tried to commit suicide in my bedroom. Why did she decide to commit suicide? Um, I caught her smoking in the toilet. Um, there was a funny smell coming from the toilet. Um, and we argued. Um, at this stage, I was completely green, didn't know what was what, put two and two together, and sure enough, she was smoking. Well, I learned to be later, your bar. Did you know when you were with her that she was um, using Yaba at the time? No, not. I'd heard stories of it. I mean, mate, I'm a, I, I smoke pot. I'm a weed smoker, huh? so I'm not coy, but... Um, no, I didn't really have any signs and didn't really know at this stage what it was all about. I'd only been there for, a, um, like I said, I was there 18 months, but this was probably seven, eight months in to me being there. Yeah, no real idea of what it was. Um, didn't know. She used to disappear from times. Obviously, looking back now, it's easy to say that she was still working what she does. A freelancer. Anyway, yeah, so I decided that was it. It wasn't for me. Try to end it. Obviously, as the story goes, she went a bit crazy. She didn't like it. Um, yeah, and she, um, she she was meaningful in what she'd done because she slashed her wrists severely. Um, again, now looking back, I see the marks which you see sometimes on the girl's arms. Um, so she was obviously damaged in that respect. But the same, I had seen the marks, but again, I didn't really compute. Um, yeah, she broke a bottle of ketchup over her head, smashed, there was blood and ketchup everywhere. I'm laughing, it wasn't funny at the time. There was blood and ketchup everywhere over the room. It looked like a murder scene. So I had a good friend, Care, who was the owner of the bar we used to drink in. Um, really good friends, you to invite to house, call her up, she came over. She knew Cherry anyway, I shouldn't say her name, but she knew her anyway was friends. Next thing you know, the police have turned up. It was bedlam. Um, obviously, they'd explained what had happened. We went down to the police station. That was all cleared up. Um, I think I gave her 2,000 baht just to give her somewhere to stay and whatnot. Um, she wasn't really living with me at the time, but it's how it works. Um, so, yeah, that was my first real insight into what goes on. Um, I mean, there were warning signs there as well later on, um, which came close. Um, she had a Thai boyfriend, apparently, as well. So, yeah, it was all a learning curve for me. But man, you make these mistakes. Huh? Um, so I was a little bit coy of relationships out there. So then you moved from um, Pathia then to Phuket to be a, 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 to be a diving instructor again, was it? Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, one of the guys I'd trained with in Pattaya had a job already. He'd left, he'd passed out and um, completed his course a few months before me. He had a job in Phuket working. So I went down to stay with him with the option view of looking for work. Um, James, my friend, was a good guy. We got there. I got there on the Wednesday. Um, we said we'd go diving on the Thursday just so I could check out the sites, which we did. Um, unbeknown to me, I met the girl at the pier, Oi, um, it was great. We went out, done the diving. That night, we're at home. I think maybe we was in a restaurant somewhere. James's phone rang. It was the company who we'd just been on their boat, South Siam Divers. They'd asked if he was available. We work, again, we work in a freelance situation at this time. You've got to have work permits. So he said no. He had a job working, but the guy sitting next to me, can work. I didn't know the dive sites. I've just been out that day, fortunately, to the very same dive site they've sent me. So yeah, I got ended up working the very next day. This was the Friday. Um, at the pier, went to the pier, lovely girl at the pier, Oi. 
um, got talking. For me, she was someone that I really was interested in. Um, she was different from what you'd say. Um, she was obviously very well to do from Phuket, born and raised. Um, come from a very poor family, but I fell in love. Um, met her say that was the first day that I went diving. Then it, I got talking with Oi more and more because she ran things from the pier and it took me a while to get anywhere with her, about six months before we even got our first date. Um, but in the meantime, I carried on working, um, living the life of a diving instructor in Phuket, working mainly on the day boats. Um, the company I started working for, South Siam, I then ended up working as a full-time member of staff for them. So working every single day, whatever many days of the year. And I ended up becoming the tour leader of the Similans dive boat. So I ended up going to work on a big tour boat, if you like, um, one of the largest there. They had two at the time. I would chop between the two, chop and change between the two. But yeah, that was when things really like, oh man, what a life. I had a fantastic crew. Um, everyone around me was good. It wasn't without its problems. But yeah, we done really well. Were you there around the time of the tsunami? No, I had, I'd been in Pattaya before that. I can't even think when the tsunami, no, it had all been done and gone by the time I got back. I think by the time I become a scuba diving instructor, it was 2005. Um, so it was still fresh. It was still, I mean, I lost a school friend in the tsunami. I've seen untold footage. I've heard untold stories and I know people that have lost entire generations of their families what about your friend your school friends where were, where were they staying um he was actually in Kowlak. um yeah kevin oh god he, man that was that was hit so bad he was on, uh, as far as i believe he was on his honeymoon with his thai wife um he was also he, uh, i hadn't seen him for a while but i'd see him in passing in england i had no idea he was actually there until after the fact that it had happened i say we were school friends at a young age yeah, he, um, he was on his honeymoon. He got up in the morning, whatever time it happened, went for a walk, and it took him. So tell us about Oi. Um, see, you, you got married to Oi then, did you? Yeah, um, I met Oi, say, about six months. Um, we become really close. Um, she moved in with me pretty much. Um, I ended up renting a house, and we was together for a while. Um, I think all told, we were together around about 11 years. After about four years um, we got married um, and say so things were, were good um, it was a different lifestyle back then I had a business I'd left the diving industry um, after a while I got disillusioned with it um, they say living in paradise but it, it the grass is not always greener um, got disillusioned with the diving was very close to going home and I decided to set up a plumbing company um, with my wife, Oye. She left her company, South Siam, because we were both there together. And she took a job in the meantime, working for a Russian dive boat company. And we were staying there. Um, and again, in this time, we'd bought a house. We had, was having a house built. So we planned for the future. We talked about kids and whatnot. I'm 50, I'm getting old. Um, but yeah, we was in love. It wasn't without its faults, but it was genuine. It, um, man, it, I loved her to bits. Still miss her to this day after even all what's happened. Um, but yeah, we was together a while. We was inseparable. Um, had a great life. And you had a plumbing business together. Yeah, I own Phuket Plumbing in Thailand, in Phuket. <laughs> Um, I opened it um, quite a while ago. I'm actually in the throes of reopening it um, because all this has happened. I'm saying it's taken me a long while to get over and get back into a decent place. Um, again, I've just come back from Thailand. I have looked, I'm going to re-establish the business again. Um, I think I've learned from my mistakes. Um, but yeah, I have a plumbing company in Phuket, um, which is a bit different to being a plumber in England. And you told me in the email that that I she didn't smoke or drink or do any kind of drugs or anything like that. No, no, no. She um well she she drank very moderately, like a beer, but I'd never really seen her drunk. Never seen her swear. She certainly wouldn't smoke. Um, I smoke pot. I smoke being polite. Okay, so she was always adamant that I wasn't allowed to smoke in the house. wasn't crazy, but um, yeah, she lived a very straightforward life. 
Um, if I'm honest, very religious. She was quite into the Buddhism side of things. Um, so she did live her life quite like that, very straight laced. She was university educated. Um, she was the only one of her family that, that was able to go to university. So she sort of stepped up um, and she made a good life for herself. She and she was um, running a dive shop, um, but she didn't know about the dive industry and um, where the hotels and whatnot tourism industry say because she's born and raised um, a lot of people liked her she was a really good person well, well let's talk about her, her sickness um so she she had hiv is yeah. that right and and you had no idea that she she had it at all no no i found out i i i found out that she, she by this time it, she developed full-blown aids I found out that she had AIDS on the day she died. I found out she was HIV positive on the day she died. Um, and yeah, it was devastating, mate. It was well, something you wouldn't believe. Um, looking back, I should have seen the signs. Um, but yeah. Were the signs there? Yes, yeah, they were. If I'm honest, they were. Um, I, I don't know whether I chose to ignore the fact um, I grew, I, I, to me, unfortunately, I grew, I grew up in the 70s and 80s. To me, AIDS and HIV was a death sentence. It, the BBC did for AIDS and HIV what Jaws did for sharks, if you like. There was this dark campaign that it was either a homosexual death. And so it's the butt of many a joke still, and there's a lot of stigma to it. Um, part of that is why I feel that people should talk about it. Um, yeah, and I, I, I really think that if it had, if it was more open, and it would have saved her life. Um, but yeah, she didn't tell me. Um, the long and the short of it is, yeah, she, my wife had AIDS. I found out the day she died. Um, and yeah. So how did you how did you find out exactly? So I found out, um, the day I found out was the very last day. She, I, I'd actually been back in England. Um, I'd come back in England for, for a, a short break. I was only scheduled to be two, two weeks. I think it was near about Christmas time, which it was. So I wanted to come home for Christmas. Came home for Christmas. Was at home. Was talking to my wife and then little bits and pieces. And she just said, oh, I just want to die. And there was a tear in her eye think really of it you know she kept kept it very much to herself my friend called me unbeknownst to me my friend called me he messaged me he said Gary I've just seen your wife you need to come home mate she doesn't look well um, whether he he had an inkling of what it was I was totally oblivious to the fact I swear on babies lives I was completely oblivious to it as soon as my friend had rang me and told me that mate I jumped straight on a plane uh got the very next flight out and I was there by the I would say the next morning um, got there and sure enough, yeah, she'd taken a, she looked terrible. She looked, she'd lost an awful lot of weight and she was very slim anyway. She was always slim, but she'd lost an awful lot of weight. Um, she was just literally a skeleton. She wouldn't move. She was very quiet. Um, and her skin, uh, the thing that I know now is her skin was very blotchy. Her skin had, had changed colour. Um, and yeah, and I said, look, you need to go to the hospital. And I tried everything in this meantime because I was oblivious to it. Um, she obviously knew. I think at one stage I flippantly and not really thought to care for her. I said, you haven't got AIDS, have you? Um, no, no. She, and she did sort of say that she had a blood issue. Um, but I had real no real reason to disbelieve it. Um, and I think part of me wanted to ignore the fact that she was going to go. Um, I think I'd said to a friend, I think she's really seriously ill. Um, and then I came home and, yeah, I, I kept saying, you need to go to the hospital. Let's go to the hospital. We booked a taxi and she was very adamant that she wanted her mum to go with her. Fine, her mum get. I went to the hospital. I came home. Next thing you know, she comes back. It isn't time. Okay. Right. So maybe a week later, she's in bed and I'm seriously worried at this time. Um, she's, um, yeah, and she's in a bad way. I don't want to go into what she, she was in a bad way next to me in the bed again, very upset. She said, it's time I need to go to the hospital. Went to the hospital. 
got to the hospital, there was a lot of talking in Thai. Um, my Thai is quite good. I, where I worked on the boats, I had to learn Thai, so I picked it up. So I do understand a fair amount of it. I'd overheard something, and it was someone saying, who's this guy? Does he know anything? And they said, no, don't tell him he doesn't know. I've been, my ears have shut up. I said, something's going on here. So I said, please, look, you've got to tell me what's going on. This was to, to two of the nurses. And they, so this was in Thai, and they said, da, 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 hold on. And they called the, the doctor out. And the doctor come out, and she asked me who I was. And I said, I'm her husband. And she said, well, how long have you been married? I said, well, eight years. She said, okay, and you need to come in to this office. I was like, no, no, tell me. I need to know now. I've got to, you know, I was fought by this stage. You've got to save us something. To no, no, come in. Went into the office, um, and the woman said, you know your wife has HIV. That was it. And she said it's, she developed full-blown AIDS. Yeah, she's, she's not in a good way. And at this stage, I just collapsed, mate. I was gone. I, I, I was, it was like I was in a different body. Um, so not only was my wife about to die, the second thing was me. I've been with my wife eight years. We'd had unprotected sex. Um, so trying for a child and whatnot, my second thoughts were to me, I'm going to be dead. I've got eight. I don't know. And at this stage, I, I was just didn't know what it was. So I, Called my family, my mum in England straight away. I'm very close to my mum. Said to my mum, look, she's got AIDS. She's going to go. Called my next friend, Vinny, who I've been close with in Phuket, who's been a really good friend of me. Called my friend Vinny. Vinny came out. He took me straight to the, well, he took me straight home. I was in bits, mate. I, could, I was a jelly. I was in tears. I couldn't stop crying. Um, the, the floods of tears didn't stop. I would just break out. You know. um, very next morning, I went to have a HIV test, fully expecting the worst. There was no way. By the grace of God, I still to this day cannot get to the bottom of how I don't. I was negative. I know that you have to have tests further down the line, um, but as far as I was concerned, if I hadn't caught it that time, I was clear of it. Anyway, yeah, so I was clear. So instantly there was relief for me. Then obviously I had all the questions going through my head. How, what, why, when? I couldn't get no answer from the family. Um, obviously my wife, I just wish we had spoke about it before. Um, I'm going to be honest and say I don't know how I would have dealt with it if she had told me, but there was one thing for sure. I wouldn't have let her die, mate. There's no way I would have let her die. Um, she was too good. Um, she was very, very brave. And So you never got to speak to her about it, did you? No. 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 I um, After I was told the fact, I actually I sat holding her hand as she was about to pass. I actually went home. Um, I was there with her daughter, who is basically my daughter. Goe, I've had her since she was a kid, but I was there with Goe. I was a bit upsetting for Goe. I held Goe's hand, told her, look, man, it's, I'm sorry. I will take care of Goe. Went home. We went home. We, uh, my uh, Goy, she was twelve at this time. We got into our bed. In she got into our bed and slept. This was at three o'clock in the morning. I continued playing on the computer, just trying to process things in a daze. About eight o'clock in the morning, the power just went off in the house. Boop. Turned back on. I turned around. My daughter was upright. We just looked at each other, and she's gone. So, yeah, that was the weirdest thing ever. Um, Eight thirty, sure enough. Next thing you know, phones rang. She's passed. Wow. No, yeah, I never got to speak to her at all. I never got. I've, I have sort of got some way in working it out. I can only pres presume that she took precautions to save me from it. I'd like to think she did as much as she didn't tell me. I'd like to think in her own way that she didn't put me at risk. Um, for some people, I, I can guess to say this is the biggest betrayal, or whatever, but I don't view it like that. It was unfortunate, um, but I do feel that she protected me in some way from passing the disease and retroviral drugs and all sorts. Um, but I don't know if she knew she, 
she, I, I, looking back now, there were were things that I put two and two together. I mean, she would always say to me, I, I was told in five years would be my very bad year. Um, and then again, again, like the day the day before she passed away, a couple of days I'd been there, a beautiful photograph of her appeared on the side of her in her wedding dress, um, looking lovely. Um, we still got it up in the house. And I, I couldn't work out why this picture had appeared. And obviously now, looking back, knowing how they do the Thai funerals, that was the picture that was to be used at her funeral that she'd requested. Well, that is, I mean, kind of lost for words. Uh, do, do you have any idea how she would have contracted HIV? Um, yes, without, without again, without putting any blame on, on anyone, um, previous to her passing, one of her ex ex bosses passed away. Um, at, the, at the time, it was believed to be cancer, but I later found out that it was also from AIDS. Um, whether the two were related, I don't know. I'm just putting two and two together. Mate, I've got so many questions. I've, I, I don't know is the truthful answer, um, but I'm leaning towards that it came somewhere from there. And how were you in the in the aftermath of, of your wife's passing? Not good. Not good at all. Um, yeah, not good at all. Um, it was a real. I, I don't know. I, um, I spent a lot of time crying. To be honest, I would just break down. It could be the slightest thing. Um, I was in tears for days and days. I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe one that she'd gone, and I couldn't believe that how she'd gone. Um, and I say there was ever there was never any there was never any hate there from I don't know if some people would sort of hate her for it if if you can get me but for me there was I was just there was just pure I thought she was so brave what she'd done um, I wish she'd done things differently. Did you go through different stages like maybe denial or and depression and? You know, is there a different stage to this kind of grief? Um, for me, I, 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 yeah, I was depressed. I was on tablets. I had a, a good couple of friends that helped me. Um, I was prescribed medicine, um, tablets. I stopped taking them after a while. Um, but more for me, I, I'm going to say, I suppose I went off the rails. Um, a little bit. There, I, I, there was a self-destruct button in me that I, I. I, I didn't really care by that time. I mean, I'd lost, I lost everything. The day she passed, I'd lost her everything. She was everything to me. So there was no lower. Um, they could go. My, I say, even my visas were cancelled. Going, my daughter, who I call my daughter, was her daughter. I couldn't associate, like, get visas and whatnot. So I knew that my time was limited of what I was doing. Um, but more than that, I'd lost. Yeah, someone who was she played a big important part in my life, sorting me out and doing bits. Yeah, I, going off on a tangent. Yeah, I hit the rails hard. Um, I suppose the usual routes, drink, whatnot. Um, and you said that um, your wife's daughter, which you consider your daughter, is her name Goy. Yep, Goy. Goy. You said in the email to me that Goy was uh, your rock. Yeah, Goy was, um, she stayed with me an awful lot. Um, yeah, she would see me in tears and she would always be with me. We're very, very close. Um, I, I think, I don't know how it always happened that way. Um, when I first met her, she was scared of Falang. She was like, no, oh, Falang. She was very scared to come near a white-skinned person. Um, but yeah, we've, I mean, we're really close. I've just spoken to her today. We talk daily. I love her as if she's my own. Um, she was there for me a lot. She would always be in the house and like, just small things. And she looks very much like her mum. She's very different to her mum, but she's a constant reminder to me that oh, is always there. Um, so yeah, we, we have pictures of her up in the house. It's not like we've forgotten her. I've forgotten her. Um, so yeah, we bought a house and Goya lived with me anyway. Um, I can't really say. Yeah, she's just always been there for me. And you're in you're in London now. Are you planning to go back to uh, Phuket then? Yep. Yes. Um, I say I've just come back. Um, it's taken me a while to get over the bits and pieces. I was very disillusioned, and because of how Phuket is, I've I, I become a little bit negative from it. 
So I took a step back. Um, Business-wise, it was really difficult. I was having issues work-wise. Um, but now I'm back in the UK planning to head back and re-establish the company again and get it built back up. My main thing at the moment is getting money behind me. Um, I can't, I'm not going to live out in Thailand. I own the house. Um, fortunately, the house was paid off um, with the insurance. I've got a truck and everything there. Um, but I plan, I'm going to make make amends here, make a few pounds, sort myself out, and I'll be back um, in the very near future, I hope. Yeah. Right. Well, let's 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 change it to a little bit of a lighthearted now. Right. So you told me that you changed your name by deed poll to Hong Kong Fooey. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Can imagine everyone watching this going, we've just changed. We've just completely changed the topic. What's yeah. the story with that? Um, OK, so I was a I was, oh man. I love cartoons. I'm a child. I'm 50 years old. But I have the brain of a 16 year old. Love cartoons. Um, when I was about 27, I was sitting indoors. I was at home alone. I'd probably been smoking something, obviously. Looking at changing my name. I, mate, I was born up in the 70s. Unfortunately, Gary is a really 70s name. They say we're dying out. I not hate it, but being called Gary is not the best in the world. So I was looking at different name changes. A few of them couldn't do. Um, I was looking at Hanna-Barbera characters um, more. Disney, you can't change your name to. Anyway, Hong Kong Fooey. I like Hong Kong Fooey. Changed my name. 30 quid. Told my wife, told my family, just as a bit of a joke. Kept it quiet. This was, I was about 27 at the time. I can't remember exactly how old. Told a few close friends. Years gone past. In a pub with a friend, met another old friend from school, Darren. Um, one of my friends said, mate, tell him your story of what you've done. I just told him the story, just laughing. Oh yeah, changed my name to Hong Kong Fooey by Deep Pole. It had been quiet at this stage. It was just like a close. Don't know why that very night he's gone home, he's rung the Sun newspaper. The Sun newspaper have jumped on it. And before you know it, I'm splashed over all the major newspapers and television programs, dressing up as Hong Kong Fooey. Um, yeah, uh, so I've done the big breakfast, um, presented a program on MTV. Um, yeah, it was just something that done on a whim. And were, were all your legal documents and like stuff getting posted to your house with Hong Kong Fooey on it? No, I changed uh, back at this time. It was an orange phone bill. I had, I did, I, I got caught by police i'm going to say caught by police um, we have licensed way bridges so in a certain area where i live if you drive a, a, a bigger truck or a van you get pulled up to go through it so i have to legally tell them that i've changed my name um, got pulled up by a policeman one time produce your documents so i showed him the documents and checked me and i said look i'll tell you this i said my legal name is hong kong fooey i said oh, i can't Put it on my license, but that's what I'm also known as because it's an alias. And they made me produce at the police station and they signed me in and down as Hong Kong Fooey. No, I didn't change any documents for that pure reason. And I ended up going to Hong Kong um, later on in life, so I'm glad I didn't. Um, but it just changed my orange phone bill and local bills um, that I've done. Did you change it back to Gary then? No, I'm still legally Hong Kong food. In fact, I had to have a police check. So for certain jobs I do, I have to have a DBS check. Um, and the DBS check has to come through in the name of Hong Kong Fui and my AKA, which is Gary Brett. Uh, it's, I mean, you, I think you, you you seem kind of a very strong person. You, I mean, you were talking about, you went through all of that and you, you were emotional. I mean, I was just thinking if I was in the same position, I'd probably be crying during this interview. You know, upset a little bit earlier. Um, yeah, um, it's certain things still still upset me and cuts deep. Um, but I've learned to live with it now. I can't change the past. Um, I'd like to think that her memory will always live on. Um, I don't, like I say, I harbour no animosity towards anyone or anything. Um, yeah, I can't. I've I've got to pick myself up. I need to survive. Um, yeah, there were dark days, mate, when I really wanted to die and. Didn't want to do anything, sort of bury my head in the sand. For me, I I would have, I would want to know, there'd be questions going around in my head. I mean, it's and knowing that you can't get the answers to them as well. Never going to answer them. Never. I'll, 
Yeah, that, and that's that was a lot of it. I mean, I've had counselling and all sorts. Um, I've had to talk through the issues with it. Um, a, a lot of it is you won't get the answers. So do you try and make up your own answers? Um, and I say I try and look positive. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I can. I don't know. Yeah, I just got through it. Um, it was it was difficult. I think more from for Goy also. I mean. Goy, she'd lost her mum. Um, Ties look at death the complete opposite way of, of I, as we do as a Westerner. Um, so f- for them, it, it was sort of a rebirth, you know, she's going to be, re- whereas I, I don't know what I believe, um, actually. Um, I still believe, I, I do, and the funny thing is, um, changing it a bit, I think she's still around. She is still in the house. Um, I, we've felt this on, and I, this probably sounds a little bit far out there, um, and obviously ties in their way of it. But yeah, I, I feel that she is still around, um, and my daughter's also said that she feels she's around um, amongst us. Whether this is because she, um, the ties, it, it, they ever, uh, as, as far as I'm aware, that if they can't rest, if something is not right in the normal world, they won't rest in the next world. Thanks very much for, for coming on and sharing the story, man. Um, I'll be in Phuket in November. Yep. Let's meet up, go for a beer, go for a coffee or whatever. Uh, I'd like to meet you face to face. We have we can have more of a chat maybe off camera about all this because it's it's a, it's a fascinating story. And just thanks very much for coming on, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I love what you do. Keep doing what you do. It's good to talk to you. Definitely meet up for a beer when we get back. It's hard for me to do this. So I'm not... Um, no, but you did very, you did very well. You did very well. You came across as just a genuine, genuine bloke with, with a really, really sad story. And then Hong Kong Fui then was to, to yeah. top it off. There we, we end on a high note. Man. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, Pete. No worries, Gary. Take it easy. I'll chat to you on Instagram. All right. All the best, Cheers, mate. mate. Take yeah. it easy. Bye bye. Bye bye.